Hey folks, in the following video, I'm going to show you how you can create slideshows for your Evora theme. Now, there are a number of different slideshows available to you in the Evora theme, but creating them, there is always one simple process. So first of all, I'm going to show you how you can first create your slideshows. And then secondly, I'm going to show you how you can add them to your pages. So let's go into the WordPress backend and then Whenever you have the Avora theme activated, you have this slideshow option. Now to create a slideshow is simple. Just go ahead and click the add new option or from the navigation menu over here on the left, click add new. And here you'll just want to label the slideshow. So you can label it for the page that you're gonna use it for or for its particular purpose, it's useful to do so. So whenever you find it, you can get it quite easily. So I'm gonna show you uh, for the video example and the first thing you, we have here is the overview video which I'm creating right now so you can watch that whenever you get to this stage and then you have the options for the slide effect whether you want it to be a slide or a fade so right now you can see that this is a slide of course if it's a fade it will just uh, fade in from the background here rather than uh, doing this sliding motion you can also set the transition speed so how quickly you would like that to move and you can also enable autoplay and add the autoplay delay so how long before the uh, slideshow actually starts to play so right now we have it set at five seconds and you can also have the pause on hover so if the user is hovering over the slideshow of course uh, this will not uh, navigate any further it will stay so they can view the slideshow so let's head back to the WordPress backend. Now adding slides is really simple. You can click add slide and there are three different types of slides that you can add. The regular image, so just a plain uh, JPEG image, an image and video embed. So you can add an embed from uh, Vimeo like we have actually done over here. So you can play the video in the background of uh, your slideshow. You can also have a video in the background and that would be a self-hosted video, preferably in MP4 format. And it should definitely be, definitely be no bigger than 10 megabytes. If you do choose this option, be very wary of that as it can slow down your pages. Now you can choose two options for that, the original ratio of the video. So of course, when you resize the page, uh, the video itself will resize and it will not be cropped or you can keep it as full screen. The video may get cropped in different devices a little bit, so just be wary of that. Now you also have various options down here below in the content section, the title of the slide. So if we look over here, you can see uh, the options here. So the title, you can have uh, the secondary title, uh, that can be the date, that could be just whatever you want. And it's only used in slideshow uh, type one and two. You can have a button label. So again, if you have a button uh, enabled on here, uh, it would be the uh, label for that. And the button will only show if you add a uh, URL here. So make sure to copy and paste the full URL into the URL section uh, for that to work. Now you have the elements color, that is all the different items on the slideshow, the menu, the um, all the different icons, the video play button, uh, that would be the elements color. So if it's a dark image, of course, choose a light color. If it's a light image, you can choose a dark color. You also have the gradient overlay. Now I'm not sure it's present on here. It actually is. You can see there's a slight overlay at the bottom of this video uh, to make these elements easier to see. And again, you can enable that and set a color for the gradient as well. Now adding images, you can simply click the plus button and you can choose any image from your existing media library or of course drag and drop images off your desktop and upload those. Quick note on the uh, images here. We recommend not using more than five images in the slideshow. You can add more, just be very wary that it can slow down your site as the images here tend to be very large. Now, whenever you are optimizing your images for the web, make sure that they are uh, approximately 2800 pixels in width by 1500 pixels in height. That will give you the optimal image uh, for 
lots of different devices and of course it allows you to choose the crop for your image as of course the standard slideshow and a screen here is not the standard format of a regular image that you would take usually in a three to two or four to three image ratio these are closer to 16 to 9 which is a two to one so definitely makes sense to crop your images before uh, uploading them to the web and please make sure that you save them for the web run them through tools like jpeg mini tiny png uh, so that they're optimized so that you're not having these large five, six, seven megabyte images and slowing down your site. As you can see, this image is 400 kilobytes. So that should be more than ample. And there is options to export that from Lightroom at a specific size. So again, if you want to add multiple images, you can just choose all of the uh, three, four, five images at once, like so. And that will add the different slides. So you can see we've added multiple slides. You can then update the title, the text, the links. And if you want to change any, you can drag and drop it into order. If you want to remove an image you can remove it and add a new image or if you wanted to remove the image or the slide completely you can remove the row and just click remove so we have this other really great feature that allows you to select the view on mobile devices so if you hover over any of the images choose the first option and it lets you choose the image position on mobile phones put up the image choose whatever uh, view type you want whether it's um, you know, the mountains here, the, the person with the dog, you can choose that option yourself and that gives you maximum flexibility for the view types on mobile devices. So you get that better view and of course, a more optimal viewing experience for your users. So you just go in, edit those images and once you're happy, you can hit update and that publishes the slideshow. If you can't uh, view the option here initially for the mobile device, um, just publish the slideshow and then come back and you should be able to then uh, choose the mobile positions. Now, once you have published the slideshow, we can easily add that to a page. And adding it to a page is very simple. So let's just go to pages and let us choose, let's actually set up a quick new page here just for this example. So we will just uh, add a new page, add the title, slideshow example. And then we scroll down to the layout section. Now in the layout section, you are able to choose various blocks. Again, there's a full video explaining how this works, but you can search for the block slideshow and you'll see there is slideshows one, slideshows two, and slideshows three. So I'm gonna add each of these and just show you uh, a few of the different options for each if there are anything specific for those. So we'll just have a quick look and check for you. So slideshow, one, two, and three. So we've added a slideshow block to the page. Uh, we want to actually put it to the top up here. And you have two options. You see there's a header placeholder item always added to the page. Now, if you're inside the slideshow and this is, and, and this is going to be your first slideshow on the page, and you want it to be full screen like this with a slideshow integrated, then you should remove the header placeholder and inside the slideshow block, make sure that the display header option is enabled. Now that means that uh, there won't be this white bar at the top of the page. If you do want a white bar at the top of the page, for example, uh, the white bar, then the slideshow afterwards, then leave the header placeholder and disable the header inside of the slideshow. Now, generally, most people will remove it um, unless they're using the slideshow further down the page. But if it's right at the very top, most people will tend to remove the slideshow and of course enable the header. You can choose a custom header if you wanted to do that for you know different pages or specifically for the slideshow. That can be done as well. Uh, just enable the custom header layout option and then choose the header type. Choose the slideshow that we have just created. So I'm going to create uh, the video example and then you can choose if it's full screen or specific and this is for slideshow one so is it going to be a full screen or is it going to be set in height you can decide uh, and then choose the pixel value if it's specific you then have the options for the titles over here so again you can see there's a b and c the c is the bottom area with the titles uh, you can choose the styling options for the different fonts on here as well and the option for skip the slideshow button as well. So there is a little button here to let you skip the slideshow here. So you just go right into the next block 
um, you can update the text for that as well. Now that's for slideshow one. Now let's go to slideshow two. Again, the same options apply here, display header, custom header option, choose the slideshow and the heights. And again, nothing different here, just the exact same process for that one as well. And slideshow three, same process again, display header, select the slideshow as well. And of course then uh, you can, with this one, add the uh, bottom area title. And of course that's shown here. So there's a little title over here in the side. And then if you've added the text within the slideshows, you'll see that uh, the slide uh, titles all display here. So that's pretty much it. You add the um, options. I'm gonna remove these two and then just publish this page so you can see the slideshow. And I'm gonna use slideshow type two because I like it the most, but of course, choose whatever one works best for you. Again, I'm gonna drag this to the top of the page up here. And I'm gonna remove this one. As you can see, there is that button, as we said before, you can have the button description and it's available in slideshow two. So if I hit publish this page, the slice is gonna show at the top, it's gonna to have that uh, navigation menu. And I'll quickly show you afterwards, just adding the regular header, as I previously mentioned, just so you can uh, get a good idea how that works. And that is pretty much everything you need to know about creating slideshows with flow themes. So let's see this slideshow page here. As you can see, we'll have this nice full screen slideshow up at the top here. And of course you can flick through the different slides. And as mentioned, if you were to choose a different option for that, for the uh, fade, these images would just fade. It would look more static and they would just come up to the front. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to, in this case, disable the header so you can see how that works also. And I'm gonna add the header block. So the header placeholder. And you only need one, I added two accident. And just drag that into place above here. So remember, you have to disable, let's just put that down. You should disable the um, header block inside the actual slideshow element. So display header disabled, add the header placeholder and then update the page. And then of course, whenever we refresh this, you will have the header bar at the top here instead and then the slideshow below. So let's just refresh the page once more. And now you'll see that we have this white navigation bar at the top and then the full slideshow directly below that. So that's it folks, that is how you create slideshows with Evora. Go ahead, get started and create them for your site.